What's going on guys? You're watching The Modern Man and we've been sitting down talking about things that men in today's day and age go through in terms of conversations, growing, reaching their full potential and everything else. Joining me today, Nate C. The Cheat, you heard that? Hey, Nate C. You heard? <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> Tyler Harris, Charles Russ, uh, the usual suspects and I'm not a father in any way, shape or form but all three of you are fathers and not only are you fathers, you're also killing the game in, in what you do. As men, a lot of us are ambitious. We, we want to reach our full potential, but we do know being, being a father is a 24 seven type of career. How do you guys, co not combat, but how do you balance that hustle, that ambition with, uh, with taking care of a life? I'll say first, uh, I've been doing this for <clears throat> about three months. <laughs> <laughs> <Veteran. laughs> I've been doing this about three months, going on four months, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so I, I don't have all the answers yet. So the balance isn't, I don't even know if you really get a balance. Mm. I, don't, I, don't see, I don't see balance in my, in my future as of, as of right now. How old is your little one? T almost two years. Almost two? And I, I'm right, <laughs> I'm no different than you three months in, I assure you. Um, but I think it's embracing the imbalances and just trying to go all yeah. in in all areas. I think, um, there's no perfect world where we're going to sit back and be like, man, everything is just in perfect balance right now. Yeah. Yeah. But it's just being in a, in a state where you can understand like, oh, okay, I need to spend a little more time at home right now. Cool. And then you go execute. Okay. I need to spend a little more, more time at work right now. Okay. You go execute. I need to go spend some time with my daughter. Okay, great. You go execute. And just being aware of the imbalances. Like, I think that's the big thing is because like when things do get out of whack, being able to understand like, oh crap, like, I'm a little out of balance right now, and if I don't, um, if I don't put some effort over here and balance this scale, then things are going to go bad at some point here in the near future. So it's being more aware of the imbalances, I think. Yes, that's that's 100% it. And as they get older and they develop personalities, like I'm sure, hmm. like my kids are 15, <laughs> um, and and they're twins, so for yeah, a while twins. it's the same person. Hmm. but they're 100% not the same person. So um, I'm, sure, I'm sure your daughter is starting, she's yeah. starting to develop oh, yeah. that personality. So the first thing I have to understand is my kids aren't me. And that's not a bad thing, they're, they're them. And you have to nurture that and make that the best thing it is. I mean, we, were all, we all played sports. This is just an example, we all play sports. What if you're, if you have a son, he comes home and he's like, Dad, I don't want to play sports. I want to be in the band. And that's all I want to do. <laughs> that should not, but it should be. Go to your room. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Get out of this house. <laughs> but that's not it. It's, nah. it's nurturing that. You know, even, even uh, the differences I have with my kids, and I used to just grind on them about, you got to do this, you got to do this, the way you do life. Mm. That's not it. Mm -hmm. You know, you let them determine their path because there's a million paths to success and happiness, which is its own conversation. What is success and happiness in life? Um, man, if they're not going to hurt anybody <laughs> mm -hmm. and they're on a path to being a productive part of this thing we call society, just nurture that and, and figuring out how to nurture that because it's going to change what they need a certain time. I actually, I had a conversation with TJ and I said, one of my things is, and this is exactly how I look at my kids, I want to be what they need. At a certain point in their life, I felt like nobody was on them. Everybody was kissing their butt. And their mom used to wonder, why are you always on them? I'm like, because nobody else ever is. <laughs> it's always beautiful. Now they've gotten older, it's not like that. So I can praise them, I can, I can do that. I can say, man, y'all did good. Dad, we played bad, we played bad. You didn't play bad, son. You made a couple mistakes, you didn't play bad, but you need to remember your mistakes and let's, let's, let's work on that. Now I can do that. Because as a dad, I feel like you gotta be the, the jack. You gotta, you want your kid to develop, everyone else is going to do what they want, but that's your child. You see what everyone else does, and you know this is missing, that's got to be you. Well, yeah, you setting them up for the real world, man, because everything mm -hmm. isn't, you know, butterflies mm -hmm. and rainbows, man. You yeah. know, you got to, you know, it's, it's cool when they're young to, to, to always praise them and everything is cute and you know, everything like that. But once they get, especially teenage, man, middle school, you got to start like, look, you about to start, you know, you about to start seeing some things. Uh, there's going to be a lot of changes in the way you think. There's going to be changes in your friends. And you got to, you know, and especially in the, getting into high school, they're ninth grade. 
You're going to 10th grade You're going now. to 10th grade? Wow. See, you know, after a while, they want to get a job. <laughs> <laughs> Pay for them Nikes, boy. Y'all out of kid sizes. I can't kick it no more. <laughs> you got to contribute. So you ain't a father? You ain't got a goldfish or nothing? Nope. <laughs> you ain't got no pets, Nate. You ain't got, you ain't got a pet. Like, Nate, at least you had a dog before. So yeah, yeah. To... Yeah, I'm sitting here taking mental notes. But <laughs> three months, two, and 15, what's story time? What's the, the craziest thing your child's done so far that kind of just, like, floored you? Uh, I'll, I'll say, I'll go first. I think maybe the, everything's crazy because she's changing every day. So, you know, the first thing I think was her looking at me, mm -hmm. you know, actually, because <clears throat> when babies are born, they don't, they can't really see right. And so when she got to where she could lock in on us, I'm like, oh, man, it, I looked at her like a real person, like, oh, you can see me. I can see you. You know, but, and then, you know, the whole thing about her, like the first smile she had and, you know, the first time she like halfway rolled over and, you know, just every. Everything's crazy for me right now. Like every day, something different happens. So you made a person. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I'm like right in that phase where she's really becoming like an actual human being. Yeah. <laughs> like like a personality, like an attitude, like like all these different things. And one of the things that uh, <laughs> this is the first thing that popped in my head that just drives me crazy. Like I'll try. Like she'll be like kind of pitching a fit, upset about something. We'll be like at a store, or at a parking lot, or something. And I'll like pick her up. And she does this thing where she just like goes limp. Like her whole body just like, it's like it loses Do all the skeletal. Like, it just is just like, like, it was completely limp. And I'm trying to hold like a, a wet noodle and it gets me so freaking angry. I'm like, I'm like, stop. Oh, no. oh, God. Oh, you are bursting. I'm just like, what are you doing? She's just like, literally, just like hanging off, hanging off my arm, and just drives me crazy. But uh, I think she knows it drives me crazy now too. <laughs> so I need to get a little bit of better, better poker face. <laughs> oh man, see, having the older kids, I get to go to the dark place. I get to go to <laughs> it's not a dark place, and I think YouTube may have heard the story before, and it's still a funny story. It's not bad. I say all the time about I'm blessed, not wood, oh, I need some wood, to have good <laughs> kids. Um, so we're, they're playing, we're playing travel basketball or a tournament. Nah, I forgot where we're at. But we're too far away to go home between games, you know. So we're going to a restaurant and waste some time. They're in the car, and the age of the internet, things are different. One thing I did realize early, and this is, this is literally a lesson to anybody, if your kids are old enough to have access to the internet, and you shouldn't anyway, but never lie to your children, even if you think what it's like. West Point, we call it equivocation. You hmm. tell a little lie just so you don't, it's like you go to someone's house and you eat, and it's horrible. When they say, how do you like it? You say it's good. Delicious. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's equivocation. <laughs> yeah. Don't equivocate with your kids, because they will find out, because they're going to look. I mean, we didn't have <laughs> internet. I, we didn't really have, you know, I think we're all in the same range where we kind of had internet, but it wasn't like yeah, it is yeah, now. No. They yeah. can find out whatever, and sometimes they're just asking to see if you're gonna tell them the truth. <laughs> I'm gonna caveat with that. So we're in the car, we're riding, and we're having a great weekend. I think that we're balling, you know, we're playing good, we're in the car, we're listening to music, we're dancing, I'm taking my little Instagram videos. One of them says, Dad, what's up, son? What does gangbang mean? Oh my God. <laughs> hold up, wait a minute, we, we got, I, that, that, I, no, hold no, okay. Just hold it, because it'll make sense later. All right. And I said, um, they're in like seventh grade. I'm like, I need some context. Yeah. <laughs> but that's how, that's exactly. I needed some context. I said, why? They have older brothers, not my son, but they have an older brother. <laughs> Using the sentence. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Using the sentence. So I said, why? And he said, well, I'm outside. My friends were playing. Cameron and some, Cameron's their older brother, and some of his friends were out there. And I pointed my fingers at my friend, like, bang, bang, bang. I'm gang banging on you. <laughs> like I'm a gang bang got it, got it. <laughs> and all the older kids started dying laughing I mean these kids oh. so if my boys are 11 12 oh. these kids are 16 17 you know and they're dying laughing and they don't know why and they're like what's it mean he's like yeah don't say that don't say that so but still like I said there's the internet so you know what they did I know what they did as <laughs> soon as this moment happened they were like it's mean when a whole bunch of guys are with Yeah, yeah. I was like, you know what I said? Yep. <laughs> 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 You're laughing, exactly. but what, what else was I going to say? <laughs> I'm glad he said it so I didn't have to say it. Yeah, true. But that was like the craziest moment. And then I realized that the internet has literally taken over, taken over. 
They can go on, they'll go to somebody, even you think you can put parental lock on everything? No, you can't lock everything. They're gonna find out. But that honesty, mm -hmm. it, it bred honesty later. Mm -hmm. They're honest with me and, and people say, no, they're doing stuff and you don't know, maybe. Mm -hmm. But they've been pretty honest, me, honest with me thus far. Yeah. I have no reason to believe they're not. I've heard conversations between them and their friends and they're not the ones recommending we run over here to this crazy party like, nah, man, I'm not going over there. I'm yeah. hurt, you know, but that was a very, just that first sentence, the same reaction y'all had, and I'm in the car, one's here, one's here, and I think it's one in the back. He, damn, look gang bang me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, Cause he meant it like I'm, I'm a gang banger. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm, a, I'm a crit and I'm gang banging. Yeah. But it, what did y'all think when you first said it? I, I thought that first and I was like, oh, ooh. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, oh, you know what I'm saying? That probably would have been my same reaction if, if, it, if I were in your shoes. Yeah, yeah I, what, why? <laughs> you tell me why, and then we'll we'll tailor this conversation. And see, I wouldn't. I don't. I don't even. I'm glad we talked because I wouldn't even done that. I'd be like, sit down, sit back, and shut up. <laughs> don't don't, don't ask your mama nothing. Never heard of her. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know her. Who is that? <laughs> Would you guys say, cause, cause like a lot of men, they, they they're very career driven, right? Mm. And they want to be successful in what they're doing. Would you say having a child increases the hustle, slows the hustle, changes the hustle. What does that do to kind of what your goals were before fatherhood to now that you're a father? How are your goals altered? I think I, I think it definitely changes things. Um, and I think, at least for me, I think everybody goes through seasons. And so I've had seasons over the last two years of, of having my daughter where I've been extremely career focused and used it as an excuse is like I've, I've, I've got to focus on the career even harder because now I've got a daughter and then there's been seasons and, and, and months in those two years where I've been super focused at home because I've got a daughter and it's it's finding the, the balance between those between those two but it just sets a different perspective I think it just puts a completely it really flips uh, your perspective on on everything it's not just about you you know mm -hmm. it's about your family now and, and what's best for them. And, and to me, that's been a huge motivator. It's been a huge motivator um, in order to succeed in business, knowing that you've got a lot more at stake uh, now. But I think there's I think there's two sides to it. Yeah, I uh, <clears throat> it definitely doesn't decrease. <laughs> it doesn't decrease the hustle, definitely changes it. Um, I'm right there with you, man. Like, you know, back before I was even married, I was DJing like five nights a week. I don't do that anymore. But, you know, am I more successful in, in how I conduct business? Yes, I am. And so, it, and, and now that I have a, you know, have a kid, um, it definitely, has, I have to refocus like, all right, what, what do I need to put my time more to as far as work goes to make sure that I have enough time at home? So, you know, <clears throat> I can say, you know, I got a kid now, now, now I need to go back to DJing five, six nights a week. No, nah, that's not, that's not where I'm at. You know, I want to make sure that I'm getting the most out of, most out of work and uh, <clears throat> that, that it would allow me to get the most time at home. So, you know, I can't really say, I can't really say, you know, what I do different. I just know that when opportunities come to me, you know, I, I, I'm always weighing my options. Like, you know, is this going to allow me to still spend time, you know, still have date nights, still spend, you know, all the time I can with my kid. And, you know, this is kind of how I have to make my decisions nowadays. So it definitely changes the hustle. Hustle does not decrease at all whatsoever. <laughs> if, anything incre if anything increases, uh, it's, definitely, it's definitely like the motivation. It's a, re it's a redefinition, man. We all, <clears throat> I would say it redefines the hustle. Um, all of us, I think all of us are kind of on that self-improvement path, trying to do better. But one thing that we talk about a lot is capacity. If you have, you know, you have your cup of water at any, in any given moment in your life, whatever, and you can pour it into whatever cups you want to. You just created a new cup. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. So you have to pour some into that cup, which means A, you're either going to lose something time-wise, mm -hmm. resource-wise in another cup, or you learn to become more efficient and things take on different levels of importance. Um, you know, just to be, you know, being open and up front, like, you know, I was in, 
I was in the military when my kids were born and I, w and I wasn't together with their mother. So one of my main reasons for getting out of the military, I was stationed in Germany. One of the main reasons for getting out of the Germany is that, for getting out of the military while I was in Germany is that I couldn't come back. Like, mm -hmm. you got four weeks of leave. That's what you got. Mm -hmm. There was no determination for me the next place I would go. And the economy was bad. And I still got out and I started my business and I stayed in Germany and started my business, but I left whenever I wanted to. I was back every other month for a couple weeks and that was the start of my growth and learning. And the reason I came back to Greenville was literally one of them said, dad, why don't you just live here? <laughs> exact words. And that was real cool about it. Like, dad, you know, if you lived here, you would miss any games. You would <laughs> you quite not think of that. Yeah, you would <laughs> all the games. Yeah, and, and I had always <clears throat> thought of it. But now they're thinking about it. Yeah. And they're, so that's like just their development, man, and learning. Yeah. Cause I, you know, um, I, I did everything I could. I mean, I had the video conference and everything, but it's not the same. And you know, mm -hmm. and that's something, you know, that, that I always have to be like, man, you miss those. And, and I owe that to them. It's almost like you can't make that up, but I owe that to them to, to do whatever they need me to do. Um, you know, one of my 90 day goals was to, when they start school, I typically only get them on the weekends because they, they get out and they play sports. So they don't get done till seven o'clock. So it doesn't really make sense for me to pick them up, take them out of my house, it doesn't. But this year, I, I'm telling myself, we're doing dinner once a week. And I've kind of got my little plan. Every other week, I'm gonna have somebody come with me, a friend, you know, somebody they know. But every other week, it'll just be us. It's just like, hey, what's up? What are we doing at school? what's going on um, so it just redefines your hustle man your priorities change and that's okay mm -hmm. we're allowed to, you can shift tomorrow if you want to that's that's totally okay and that's what it it did for me because I even changed from the time they were born I can tell you the person I was before they were born was not the person I was the day after they were born immediately knowing that I did this and mm -hmm. and I owe it to them it monetarily uh, emotionally, I owe them that, and and that that just took over importance. Yeah, I th I think um, my problem with this idea of balance is that ninety nine point nine percent of the time, the context of the conversation on this work life balance has to do with taking away from some area, mm -hmm. and it's usually the work area. Like 99% of the conversations are like, oh, I'm working on my work-life balance, so I've got to start leaving the office a little earlier. And what people don't, for whatever reason, think of is the fact that you can balance a scale two ways. Yeah, you can take away from one side and it'll balance, but you can also just add to the other. And so when you look at, the way I like to look at it now is just look at like, am I thriving in all the different areas? And so that may mean like, I don't need to work less if I need to spend more time with my family. I may need to sleep less. I may need to like hang out with friends less. I need to go less happy hours. I need to go to less, you know, extracurricular activities, anything that's going on outside of work and family. Maybe I need to do those things less, but it, I think people use that as this crutch or this excuse yeah. to say like, you don't, you don't ever hear the conversation. Of, you don't ever hear this conversation. Man, I've been crushing it at home this quarter. Next quarter, <laughs> I'm gonna take it off a little bit at, at, at home and I'm gonna go like all in at work. Like that conversation doesn't exist. And so why is it only used in the context of taking away from something? And so my idea is just going, my idea, it's not my idea, but the way I look at things is just going all in, in each of those areas. And again, identifying those imbalances to be able to know which area you need to keep pushing to get all in on and just looking at thriving just as a whole, not, not in, um, not in this area of what, yeah. what, what can I possibly take away from? It's like, that's a lack mentality to me, yeah. as though there's only a certain amount of hours in a day. I've got my sleep, I've got my fun, and then now I got a balance between work and home. That's just, you it never work like that. Day. Never enough hours in a day. Yeah. 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 So you can drop that fun, but that's, you know, that's why, it's, uh, that's why I'm a big fitness pusher. Mm. My boy is like, what guy, the guy I'm friends with is like, man, I'm killing it at work, but I'm so tired when I get home. I'm like, well, since I've known you gain 40 pounds and <laughs> you don't get up, and, eh, but if I was going to the gym, I'd have to get up. I challenged him, I'm like, we'll get up early. I'm like, we'll get up and go to the gym for 90 days and see what happens. Mm -hmm. He drops 25 pounds. Now when he gets home from work, not only he's more, pro you know, you know the game, oh, yeah. you're more productive at work. Mm -hmm. And now when you get home, you're not tired because mm -hmm. you got to 
two-year-old. She's like, I'm ready to go. Let's get some things. <laughs> Lego time. <laughs> now, you know what? You get home, you pull that tie down, you're like, it's Lego time. <laughs> Instead of being like, I got to rest, I got to snap. It's literally, man, there's, there's a way. Like you said, it's, it's like a four, five, six, depending on how you break your life up. There's a scale with all these different places. You can balance it. Like, yeah, forget sleep, man. If my kids want to do something, I... We always make time for the things that are important to you. Yeah. And I think that that's a harsh reality that a lot of people don't really keep themselves in check with. Yeah. It's like, if, if, I'm, if I'm not spending the time there, then I have chosen that that's not an important area of my life. And that's a hard pill to swallow based on some people's actions, what they're really actually um, doing on a day-to-day -day basis. Well, we all talk about our hustle and, and, and fatherhood, but let's give it up to like the real MVPs because you, know, you have a partner in crime here mm -hmm. in terms of when you're out hustling and, and you're away from the home, typically the mom's watching over the kids and whatnot. Something you brought a real good point to before, Nate, when you mentioned you know, still spending time with my daughter and you also mentioned still able to do date nights. Mm -hmm. How important is it to kind of give your teammate that praise for helping you do what it is you do when you're away from the home? <clears throat> Man, it's one of the most important things in my life and my whole situation like and on top of all that we're blessed to have parents our parents who can <clears throat> give us a couple hours to you know say hey you know watch the kid here here the baby we're gonna go you know we're gonna go get something to eat we're gonna go i'm gonna sit at the house you know what i'm saying but no you know we we try to do date night every week and and you know like that's that's how we started you know before before the kid thing and and you know that we made that a staple, you know, we need to make time for ourselves. And on top of all that, like now that we have a kid, she deserves it, man. You know, it's just, you know, this, if I didn't, if I didn't, if I didn't genuinely just want to go and date her, like she deserves it because of, because of, you know, because of how she takes care of our family. So it's, it's one of the most important things. So, you know, if you got, you know, that's just my situation. So some people don't have their, you know, they don't live with their significant other or their, their baby mama, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So, so, you know, if, if, your, if your baby mama's taking care of your kids, you know, you can find, other, you can find different ways to, to tell her, hey, I appreciate you, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So, you know, find, find out what works for you. That just, that's what works for us. And so, you know, one, the, the, <clears throat> the kid got here because we have a, a good marriage so so you know we need to keep building on top of that and as well building as a family you know the three of us so that's where I'm at with it I think communication is key um, in keeping in check with, with the partner um, I mean I spent 238 nights in a hotel last year that is not easy um, but it was even harder on my wife than it was for me. Like I was the one away, <laughs> yeah. you know, like she was the one at home uh, with the child handling everything at the house pretty much. Um, but it's, it's the communication and, and understanding that, Hey, uh, for the next three months, like I got to go, 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 go. But here's what's going to happen in three months. Here's what we're going to be doing in three months. Um, and keeping that, that lane of communication open at all times for her to feel comfortable enough to be like, Hey, um, been gone a lot lately like we should probably should probably be home a little bit more and and to understand that from my perspective of saying like oh got it got it completely understand and then know when to pump the brakes um with traveling and and keeping up with these uh schedules to make sure that it all keeps keeps going around um the only way i've been able to do what i've done over the last few years is because of the fact that my wife was so strong and, and independent and able uh to handle that situation but now she's in a position where she's starting a business and so it adds like a whole nother, a whole nother level to it. And it's been extremely humbling and extremely good experience for me to see her in that environment and to understand how difficult it is. And this probably brings on a whole nother topic um, with gender roles in, in a marriage, but it's extremely difficult for her in the fact that like, I leave and go to the office, I leave to go out of town for work, and she's got a daughter and she's trying to start a business and she got nowhere to hide <laughs> like yeah. there's nowhere to hide like the daughter the two-year-old is running around and i'm like hey see you at six 
good luck working today. Yep. And, and <laughs> there's something wrong with that. But like, I don't know the solution to it. Um, but it's these, these gender roles that have been defined um, forever. But it's given me a tremendous amount of respect for her seeing her do her thing, uh, starting her business while taking care of uh, our child. And, and it's given me the opportunity to step up in, in certain areas and help. And I'm not helping near enough, um, certainly. I have a lot more that I could be doing, but um, but man, the communication and all of that, they say, you know, the communication's key. It's communication's everything. Like it's, it's the only way it works is if you're able to actually talk about it. And if the person's able to say like, hey, things aren't working so well right now, let's, let's look at the situation and to be open to having those conversations, it's the only way um, that you can stay in a, um, productive environment, especially in a marriage. I think it's key. Thanks, Chip. So, <laughs> um, I, so, so I'm the baby daddy, baby, mom, baby mama guy. No, we, ain't call, we ain't calling you no names. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We, just yeah. talk, we just talking. Yeah, we just talking. I'll, I'll, I'll just say, okay, so I'm that guy. And it is communication still key. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, as much as even in a moment of disagreement between the two of you, Communication is still key. Uh, so it's like, look, I'm gonna be there at six. At six. So please have them ready but at then six. You better, <laughs> but then you better be there at six. <laughs> no, cause, no, but honestly, I, I can't even put that on her. Any, we get along. You know, we get along. Uh, for, for the guys in the universe that are in my role, you don't have to, you don't even have to, you don't have to be friends. If you are, it's great, but you don't have to be friends. You just have to respect one another and communicate. That's literally it. And I'm looking directly in the camera because it is the biggest truth. You respect each other and communicate. I 100% 100% respect how much she loves my children. I appreciate it. I respect it. And then you get the other part of that, like when you do decide to have a relationship with someone else, one of the big things is that my current significant other wants to spend time with my kids. She actually gets mad at me sometimes because I'm like, we're going to do this, man time. And she's like, well... <laughs> I want, I want time as well because she wants to be a part of that. And that's, you know, honestly something to look for if you do have kids and, mm -hmm. you know, if they want to be involved with what your kids are doing, take your kids places, invite them everywhere, introduce them to her. I mean, she, she does all of that. So I, I'm very lucky on both ends of that spectrum. Um, and it's, no, it hasn't always been like that. Like we've, obviously we've, we've disagreed at moments. I've disagreed with uh, my children's mother, disagreed with my, my girl about things but a disagreement is a form of communication. Mm -hmm. You gotta put it out there, you gotta talk about it, and you gotta figure it out. Uh, and at the end of the day, when everyone looks in the same direction, this is, well, they're the most important thing. Don't make any decisions based on what you want. Base, make all your decisions based on what they need, which isn't always what you want. Hmm. Um, <laughs> it's not. You know, you may think they you should. Gotta, you ain't got to say nothing. No, no. You ain't got to say nothing. No, no. I was about to get deep. I was about, 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 about to go up under some sneakers or something, man. <laughs> well, yeah, that's it, man. Commun it, they're, they're right. Yeah. Talk, say it, figure it out, write it down. If you can't agree with your talking, put it on a piece of paper. <laughs> Look, this work for both of us, done. Yeah. You know, <laughs> communicate. Now, as uh, having two 15-year-olds, have they brought girls home yet? Girlfriends, any? Ain't no bringing girls home, Ted. Why are you, why, why are you, why are you bringing them? Like, Dad, this is my girlfriend type thing. Any of that? Uh, they've had girlfriends. Um, yeah. Nothing, you know, I mean, they just got permits. So, driver's license is coming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's simple. I don't know. One of them kind of, he's kind of iffy on that. He, 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 I don't know if he's going to be able to drive for a minute. Smart, <laughs> smart one's going to be driving soon. Yeah, y'all know who I'm talking about, too. Uh, uh, they they're not there yet. They're very athletically focused. Um, like, and you know, that's what they want to do. It's not a press for me. That's, they're like, football, basketball, football, basketball. I'm gonna play football and then I'm gonna go play basketball. And then I'm gonna play a little Fortnite and go to sleep. That's, that's, that's it. That's, that's what they want to do. Um, I haven't had that issue, but I've seen it. Uh, so when they played, like, especially when they play travel basketball, all the kids would want to hang out or I'd take a couple of them. It'd be me and my boys and another kid or whatever. And those conversations are out there. Yeah. I mean, it's a different universe, man. Mm. It, it, it's a different universe than when we were in school. 
and you have to watch it. And even when as you guys' kids get older, 16 years from now, yeah. it's gonna be immensely different. I mean, it's changing every day. Ted, if you have a kid, you're gonna be at the back end, you're gonna be like, man, what is going on? I'm gonna call you. They got this all, they got this new app where they can see out each other's eyeballs. It's gonna be insane, man. You just you just gotta watch it. But they're my, my son's dating a hologram. I don't know what to do. <laughs> hey, you gotta you, but communication. She talks to me. Yeah. I got cussed out by a hologram. Dad's like, don't talk to my my son's like, don't talk to my girlfriend like that. I mean, wait, what? Uh, but communication is still that, that communication is still key because if you communicate with them at least you'll know what's going on yeah. and at least you'll have a shot to try to coach them and because you're you know imagine coaching the kid it's like my kids try we're playing baseball I can't help you in baseball I've never played but I can pay attention and learn from some other people and then try to help you on, on what I see that's that's what it's turning into because it, right man it's different you know social media is different yeah um, you know, like you hear these stories about, oh, this kid took a picture and now it's all over the school. We didn't have that problem. I got a beeper. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just, oh, that, that, that's, I, I got 35 cent. Let me go make this call. That, that's all we had. So it, it's just different. It's communication. It's, it's staying on top of things, not being intrusive, but communicating so they'll share with you and they know it's okay to share with you. I feel like that's, that's the biggest thing. If you can establish that and maintain it. My, my child knows this is, sounds silly, this is a safe place, like I can, I can talk mm -hmm. to dad. I can literally have this conversation with dad, he's not gonna judge me, he's not gonna flip out. You know, if my kids came to me and told me they were doing something that was bad, I say, well, son, you know, you know, you know you're in trouble, you're gonna be, you're in trouble. You gotta be in trouble for this, but let's, let's work through it. Yeah. I bring up that, that dating question too, because whether you're, you're raising sons <clears throat> or raising daughters, I'm interested to know what, what qualities of a man would you want your kids to kind of like value and respect and, and kind of, here, here's the hard question is, what are you doing to show your, your kids the qualities? And I know you, yeah, see, you I, ain't worried, I, ain't, I ain't worried about that right now, Ted. I ain't, I ain't worried about no man she gonna see in any year. All right, I'll let you, I'll let you start, but I ain't worried about it. Which camera I'm looking to? Right, right there. It's not happening, brother. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, it's honestly, it's the way I look at life now, is what would my daughter say if she found out about this? What would my daughter say if she heard that I said this? What would my daughter say if she finds out that, that I did something like this? That's the way I look at everything because my wife's strong. Like she's strong, she's independent. Like she'll be fine. Like she'll be upset, but she'll get over it, and she'll be fine. Like she, if I like look at all this, um, all this stuff coming out in the news, all these different people that have assaulted people and, and all this stuff. Like like if something like that were to come out, like my wife, she's she'll be fine. Like she'll divorce me, move on, be happy, live a great life. But like I'm worried about what my daughter. Like what what's my daughter gonna? think if all of a sudden something comes out about me and she were to she were to find out and so that's kind of the lens at which i view the world now um and it's it's a powerful one it's a very powerful one um because there's a lot of responsibility uh with that um sons i would imagine to the same degree but something about a daughter man it's it's um it's a it's a heavy it's a heavy heavy issue for sure mm -hmm. um and, and trying to be that man like not not like what would that man look like like trying to be that man like striving to be that man that she would one day um uh bring home i guess i don't like the way you said bring home like, <laughs> not bring home mm -hmm. but like introduce you to um i think that's a it's a really really good i think place mentally to be to be striving for that uh, on a daily basis it kind of keeps things really in a good perspective from my mind i, I don't know i was joking earlier not really but <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't <laughs> i definitely want uh my daughter to you know when that when that happens that she find a man that's better than me so i had to be the best man mm. that i can be so i mean that in a, in a nutshell without going too deep into it then that's what it that's what it is you know what i'm saying if i you know and just having a kid just makes you think okay i gotta stop doing stupid stuff mm. you know what i mean like you know mm -hmm. I'm a DJ, so, you know, part of my life is partying, whether it be starting a party, whether it be a part of the party, um, 
that's just what it is. So I have to make sure that I party responsibly, whether mm -hmm. it's, you know, whether, whether I choose to partake and, and, and drink while I'm working or whether I, you know, whether I don't want to, you know, it, that's just like little, little changes here and there and how, like how I, how I carry myself, how I talk to women, how I talk to my wife. You know what I'm saying? I, when, when she gets old enough to, to understand the, 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 the conversations and the interactions that I'm having with other women, I want them to be positive ones, ones that she will look at and say, okay, that's how a man needs to treat a woman. That's how I need to be treated. Mm -hmm. You know, so, and so it's <clears throat> having to, you know, get, make sure that I, I, whatever I do in front of her or whatever she may, like you said, if you, if you do it, if you, you know, if it's on the internet, the way things are nowadays, you know, I just have to be on top of, top of my game all the time and just, you know, make sure that whatever she sees is a perfect example, well, not perfect example, but an example of somebody that she would want to um, date later, you know? That's why I said, you know, when she, we, we plan to keep up these, me and my wife plan to keep up these date nights, so when she gets dropped off, she knows mom and daddy gonna go on, gonna go on a date. You know, my daddy still opens doors for mommy and, and me and I don't deserve anything less. You know, just, you know, little stuff like that. So I'm still learning. We're, we're about four months in. <laughs> you know, ask me in about 30 years when she's allowed a day. <laughs> <laughs> but it's important, you're, you're setting the standard. Like you, yeah. you, like you set the standard and you make it to where like instantly that the guy in your head that you don't want, like there's no way that that guy could even enter into the conversation because you've set the standard so high that they would never allow uh, that type of person even, um, they would never even entertain that as an option uh, because you've set the bar so high. I think that's the goal. Yeah. How is, important is it to teach two young boys how to be men? Man, you, you know, it's, they're gonna be a reflection of me, reflection of the way I treat people, uh, reflection of the way I do things. Their mother can teach them a million things, but at the end of the day, they're men and they're gonna emulate what they see. So um, I definitely, I'm not gonna say I'm envious of you, you guys as, <laughs> as having daughters because I, I, have a, I have a goddaughter, I have some nieces and, and the worry button, it's, it's just this literally just a worry button. And that, I think that's a natural man response to worry about, uh, to worry about females, protect people, to think of the protection side. Um, but setting that example, it goes both ways. The, the example of the man that I want them to be, um, Lucky for me, my girlfriend calls me out on it all the time. <laughs> if, if, if I'm not setting that example, she'll be like, well, you know, your boys see this, your boys see that, you do this, you do that. She calls me out on it and she's right. You know, I, I need to be uh, the person I want them to be. And that's an example all the way around. We're talking about dating, but we're, I'm talking about the, even the person would be like, I make sure they spend time with my grandma. Mm -hmm. And I don't think, I, I would say three years ago, they weren't too into it. Now they're like, hey, we're going to see Granny. They, they, they understand. This person isn't going to be there. You need to talk to this person. You need to know this person. You need to understand this person mm -hmm. later. So I think when, you know, I don't want to limit that thought process to just dating. Even the hustle I put in for, mm -hmm. for the work front, I want them to see that. Yeah. And I think that applies to, as, like you said, with the changing dynamics of the household. That applies to young ladies as well. You want them to see that, like, hey, man, I'm out here working for it. I'm working for it for several reasons, because I want to provide for you, because I want you to have, be better than me. I want you to have better than what I had. You know, I want to step up on what was provided to me. I want to step up on that. So it, it's an all around just example. And when you lock that in, in your head, when you wake up in the morning, you said, I'm the example. I'm the example, and I got to be that example in all aspects of life for this person that I created, it'll, it'll change your, change that mindset it will keep you locked in and make sure you are setting that example so wrapping it up um for for everybody watching men maybe some mothers some wives some some fathers some like me not a father yet you gotta get What's, your goldfish man <laughs> <laughs> like a puppy or something yeah. so you were a little dog i mean i had a rock once <laughs> I'll let, you, I'll let you. I'll let you. I'll uh, let you babysit my dog. <laughs> <laughs> like a little practice. Well, yeah, what? man. Cause I, I, I babysit Nate's dog. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. He took care of my dog for it's your turn. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll babysit. Talk, I'm sorry, we're talking. About <laughs> I'll babysit. But like, what, what, what tips 
warnings, uh, advice could you, could you give to somebody either in the midst of fatherhood, not quite there yet, thinking about it, or, or already knee deep in it? Man, communication and be the best you can be. I ain't gonna warn you about nothing because everybody's stuff's gonna happen. <clears throat> and, the, you know, stuff's gonna happen. You can, you can try your best to be ready for every single thing and something will still happen. So, communication with, with your partner, um, be the best you can be, and that's about it. Oh, and if you're waiting on having enough money before you have a kid, <laughs> it ain't gonna never happen. You ain't gonna never have a kid. So just go ahead, go ahead. If you're trying to have kids, go ahead and have one. And then you know the money will come as long as you as long as you still hustling, staying on top of your on, on top of your stuff. But if you say, well, I'm gonna wait till we uh, pay our half our house halfway off, and then we'll wait till about about twenty thousand in the bank, it ain't gonna happen. You ain't gonna never have that money. <laughs> so, something's gonna happen to your house. You have to get it fixed. <laughs> have a <the> kid, man. <laughs> That's the way the universe works. <laughs> man, so tips tips on kids. One thing I'll say before I say that. Like the day or, day or two after that last uh, Kanye album came out, I was out running and that song Daughters came out. And I'm like, <laughs> like put, put away tears trying to run. I'm like, dang it, Kanye. <laughs> talking, if you've heard that song, like it's deep on some stuff. Like talking about like, like not wanting that guy to come around and like I was that guy or I am that guy. And he's talking about, <laughs> he's talking about not wanting to, uh, her to have curves like her mother and <laughs> all that kind of stuff. I was like, man. This is deep. Anyway, side note. Um, but tips, man, I think it's just understanding that you're never going to understand everything, but just always trying to, to, to bring your best, to, to, to do your best, uh, like Nate said. Uh, but I think the biggest thing is quality time, like making sure the quality time um, with the kids individually, um, with your spouse, and just making sure that that time is, is super valuable because time is all we have. I mean, time mm -hmm. is like time is our most valuable resource and I can even think back to just these short two years uh, to the time that I missed being away for, uh, so much and and now just trying to create those those memories now that she's like you know becoming an actual human being with with thoughts and, and memories um, trying to create as many moments as I can um, and when you're there like being not just present but actually being available um, I think someone said this I don't know it may have been Jonathan um, about listening with your eyes, um, not just your ears, like being like fully, fully in that, in that moment, um, is, is powerful. And I think that's, that's probably my biggest tip. And that's, I mean, you gotta sit on the head, be a part, be as much a part of their lives as you can. Um, I would say one thing is know, know the world they live in. It's not the world you live in not the world you were raised in, understand it. Now that doesn't mean when, you know, I'm wearing baggy jeans and, and that's not, me, but I understand their world uh, so I can be empathetic with any situation they go through. Not sympathetic, because I don't, I'm not gonna have sympathy for you if you go out and do something stupid. I, I'm your dad, I have to show you that it's wrong, but I can empathize with, I did something stupid on social media, it caused this, this, and this or be able to empathize, because the more you can understand them, the more you can work with them, the more you can talk to them, the more you can relate to them, and the more they'll be able to relate to you, which inevitably breeds, breeds trust, because that's every parent's biggest problem. I feel like at the end of the day, as kids get older, they don't trust you. When they do something wrong, they don't want to tell you because they don't trust your response. They don't feel like you're there to help them. They feel like you're there to punish. So live in their world with them, Teach them about your world. Yeah, but be, back back in my day, yeah, I, when I was coming up. Yeah, that back then, back then <laughs> in the day, when I used to walk five miles up hills both ways, both, both ways in snow. <laughs> you know, I didn't have no my my, my iPhone I only had a thirty minute battery. <laughs> so I don't don't live in their world. Be a part of their world. Understand what they're going through. Because if you don't, how can you tell them how to navigate? Yeah. Make seat. Yeah. Yeah. Make seat. Yeah. Yeah. Appreciate you. Guys, thank you. And, and pretty much, you're not ready. You're not going to be ready. Uh, I'm not ready. <laughs> you're not ready. <laughs> 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 you're not ready. <laughs> he wasn't ready. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Well, I mean, that's the main takeaway. <laughs> the thing is we, we learn as we go. We try and be the best that we can, be an example, be a beacon, and understand the world they, they live in. I really love that point. And I also love Nate saying, hey, the universe works. You're not gonna save up enough money. If you're ready, you just jump in, even though you're not gonna be ready. <laughs> I'm saying, it's just what it is. You it know, is. If it, you know, you can have a million dollars. I'm gonna wait till I get about two million before, <laughs> then, then all my kids be straight. No, nah, man, just go ahead. Jump in that yeah. cold pool. You'll go get ahead. used to the water. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's right. Realistically, exactly. yeah, the time will never be perfect. And uh, we, we touched on it a lot, communication, communication. And uh, shout out to all the real MVPs out there, the moms that make the men's hustle possible. This is Modern Man, go out there and do your thing. Spread. Spread.